approach our Savior's invitation, I want us to think about our thoughts, our thought life, and how we should think uh, as Christians. Mainly because, as we all know, we live in an increasingly negative world. Uh, we're constantly surrounded by negative images, uh, negative messages. Uh, even our own human condition, we're, we're predisposed to be negative. Uh, humans are, are more likely to respond to something negative than positive. You know, some of it is practical uh, for, uh, for the sake of survival. Uh, the baby is going to forget how tasty grandma's apple strudel is a lot faster than th that the stove was hot. That's, that's going to be something that's, that's going to be remembered. So some of it is, is, is practical. It's for survival. But in general, a lot of it is because of our surroundings, because of our image, the images that we're exposed to. Um, it, it's, I had a teacher when I was in high school, my U.S. history teacher. Uh, she encouraged uh, class participation, and she rewarded people that uh, participated in class, but she also penalized anyone that blurted out a wrong answer because she understood that we're more apt to remember a wrong answer two or three times more than a correct answer that's blurted out. We see our politicians and advertising always looking to tear down the opponent as opposed to bring up their own attributes. Why? Because it's effective. Uh, if you've worked at a job or you've been married any length of time, you'll know that one bad step erases 100 good ones. So we live in a negative world. But Christians, we should have an advantage. Uh, the Bible clearly teaches and tells us that part of our experience uh, is to transform our thinking uh, with our thoughts, transform our minds with meditating on biblical subjects and on the Lord. Uh, the Bible is replete with examples, and we'll, I'll share a few here. In Joshua 1 and verse 8, uh, Joshua says, the, the book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do everything that is written in it. The blessed man at the beginning of the book of Proverbs, we all know this very familiar verse. Blessed is the man who walked not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the paths of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. Uh, Paul instructs Timothy to not neglect the gift that is in him, which was given to you by the prophecy within the laying on of the hands of the eldership. Meditate on these things and give yourself entirely to them that your progress may be evident to all. 1 Timothy 4 and verse 15. And then finally in uh, 1 Thessalonians 5 and verse 21, test all things, hold fast to what is good. That's always a good one because uh, even a few weeks ago, uh, Saritha and I had the opportunity to go up to uh, Baylor Hospital to uh, visit our beloved Chris Monk. And we know Chris through his great example, his fidelity to uh, God's service, Hebrews 10 and verse 25. I mean, uh, he comes to worship God even uh, in, in his worst condition. But when we were there, and we kind of got there at a, at a moment where he was being attended to by the, by the staff, one of the things I, that stuck out to me was how cheerful he was. And every time we asked anything about him, he returned it with, asking about us. 
And that was a good, even with the situation there, and that was a good that I decided I was going to hold on to uh, because it's too easy to get wrapped up in all the problems and all the things in this world. And it was good to see that when you test things and you look th through things, you can always find some good in it. And finally, I'm going to share a scripture that we're all familiar with in Philippians 4, uh, verses uh, 8 and 9. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is virtue and there is anything praiseworthy, meditate or think on these things. The things of which you have learned and received and have heard and saw in me, these do, and the God of peace will be with you. As we extend our Savior's invitation tonight, I submit to you that salvation is lovely. It's a good report. It's a fine virtue and it is praiseworthy. It is all the good things that God gives us in all of his promises. Because we cannot realize any of those promises. We cannot transform or come above any of the thinking that the, that the world throws at us without submitting to our Savior's invitation, without becoming a Christian. That, that, that is first and tantamount into having peace with God. So tonight, if you need to put on our Savior in, in baptism to be saved, let's not put that off. Let, let's, let's get that done. Let's, let's do that virtuous, that noble, that wonderful thing and become a Christian. If perhaps you've been caught up in some of the negative well, there are people here at this church uh, that are willing to, to pray for you and to extend fellowship to you to make that better. The prayers of the righteous availeth much. Another thing that Christians should think and ponder on. So tonight, if any of those things are your desire or, or that will meet your need, let's do it now as together we stand and sing the song of invitation.